All right. The Los Angeles Rams, of course, won the Super Bowl. We talked about that on the show on Tuesday. Did you see the, not the parade, but the celebration? Did you see that uh, from, what was nope. it, Tuesday, Wednesday, whatever it was? Uh, it, the, the second the Super Bowl was over, I muted all Rams, Cooper Cup, all, it, anything <laughs> impossible. I think I'm footballed out. I actually really enjoyed the extra week of football, but it's one of those things where I have pushed away from the table, and if you brought dessert to me, I think I'd just pass. <laughs> uh, this was exactly the amount of football I wanted and needed, and, and I have done nothing. With the say, hey, I don't care. Los Angeles, let, hang on, I'm about to say this right now. Los Angeles is the least deserving sons of bitches that, 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 that out of all 32 teams in the country, least deserving fan base on the planet to get a title. All right. Stan yeah. Kroenke is a piece of garbage, garbage <laughs> owner. And, and, and that guy's now got a Lombardi that he gets to hoist up. No, no, no. Don't ask me to be high, happy for those people. I don't give a damn about any of it. So the second <laughs> well, they won, I didn't give one this, shit. This plays into exactly what you're saying because, brother, there was nobody at that celebration. I'm telling you, there was that nobody cared out in L.A. They did not give one half of a damn that the Rams don't won care. the Super Bowl. It was hilarious. Uh, now, first thing, did you see Matt Stafford? And and his reaction to that photographer falling off of that stage. Yeah, because you guys sent it. To yeah, we <laughs> we, we were talking about it in the group chat. No uh, matter how much I tried to hide from it, my friends still fan me with shit. I, I don't want to watch. But, I could not believe his reaction to this. That that photographer, which I shared out the video on Twitter, if anybody wants to go over and check it out. Uh, it, I'm telling you. This was a scary incident, and I understand where Stafford was coming from, but my God, it, he might have been drunk. He might have been all this other stuff, but he, he looked like a frat boy that was just trying to stay out of trouble. And He is a frat boy. Uh, he's 37 years old. Like, you don't, I, don't, I, don't, I know, I he know. Acts, look at who he is. Oh, but he's paid his dues, guys. Oh, but he paid his dues to take some fucking country club. Oh, my God. His reaction. The NFL. Be a goddamn like, professional. It, he, he is not. He's not deserving. Anybody would have put a gold jacket on him, I'm done. Done with it. <laughs> um, that, that situation, though, was very interesting because the photographer fell off the stage, and I believe uh, she, that was she's his... She's in bad shape, right? Yeah, she's she, in real bad shape. She fractured her spine. So I shared out yeah, the GoFundMe no, to go help her yeah. out, but man. Yeah. Uh, you don't think the Stafford family's helping her out? I, I don't know. You don't know. think Stan Crocky's not going to help her out? I did. So far, nobody's you know nobody said anything about it. Let me let me tell you a story. Let me tell you a story about Stan Kroenke that I heard today. Okay. Today, right? My boy T Bob, you know my boy T Bob, right? Oh yeah, T Bob. Right? Yeah, yeah, it's one of, one of the, one of the best gifts I've ever gotten. I don't like gifts. People don't send me gifts. <laughs> Gary, stop sending me gifts. I don't like gifts. But you you send me a. Uh, a, 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 what's that thing called? Cameo. Cameo, yeah. From from a boy, T-Bob Avery. He's, he's an old LSU uh, center back in the day, offensive lineman. But but he really wasn't famous for being an LSU offensive lineman, okay? He's famous for being T-Bob after that. And um, he talked about a story about Stan Kroenke while he was with the Rams, okay? The player rep for the Rams set every rookie down when they were coming in and told them all, we have a rule here in St. Louis. Do not look Stan Kroenke in the eyes. And he said, whoa, whoa, whoa. I, I, I didn't expect to, like, see the owner and go up and talk to him. He said, no, no, son, no. Don't, damn sure don't speak to him. Don't make eye contact with him. And if he looks at you, you avert your gaze. That's the son of a bitch Stan Kroenke is. No, is that just rookies you, or or was you, that just players? Saying, that was players. That was wow. his players. So what do you think he thinks of the fans? The regular old Joes that, that pack his pockets full of billions from Walmart and from them stadiums. What do you think he thinks of those people? I, I, I'm sure it's what, not good. Look, Robert Kraft <laughs> ain't a perfect man by any stretch of the imagination. But Robert Kraft loves his players. Never once is ever going to have a problem with his players. 
That's a man. That's the reason these guys fight so hard against the owners. It's because the owners like that. True. True. You're hundred percent right. That guy's a piece of shit. Now he's got a Lombardi to put in his office. Which is just it it, it, it goes to show that you can in fact buy a trophy. And that just well, sucks. So this is the reason I hated the Rams in the Super Bowl. It, yes, I worship Joe Burrow, and I want Joe Burrow to be the second coming of Tom. All right, but forget about all that. All right, if it was Andy Dalton in the in the in the in the Bengals, I would still have felt the exact same way about the well, not the exact same. I would have still been all Cincinnati for for the very reason of of what you're talking about. A hey, L.A. don't deserve this shit. Okay, those people don't care. It doesn't mean anything to them. Their owner doesn't. He's a bad guy. He's a piece of trash, and he doesn't care about the fans. He doesn't care about the sport. None of this means anything to him. Okay, he's just he's just a monster with a lot of money. That's all he is. Yeah, that's yeah. all he is. The city of Cincinnati let kids out of school the day after uh, 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 the Super Bowl, win or lose, because they wanted it to be important. They wanted them to stay up and watch it. And if the team won, they wanted them to stay up and celebrate. Don't worry about coming to school the next day. You enjoy this. That, that's the kind of city that earns things like this. And and one thing I know about football, or I always used to know about football, is football is not like baseball. Football is not like basketball. You don't get to build super teams and just roll off titles. Okay? That shit happens in basketball all the time. Happens in baseball every now and then. It's never happened in the NFL until now. True. That team was just a super team put together. And, 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 and you know the reason Sean McVay is considering retiring? Same reason Sean Payton stepped away. Because they mortgaged the future for this for so long. And now mortgage is coming due. They got no money and they got no draft pick. Well, guess what? You're going to suck the next couple of years. And that golden boy shine that you've got on you right now is all going to go away. So it's better for me to retire than to end up six and in, 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 in whatever and, and be exposed for being mediocre. True. True. Very true. That's why he's going to retire, by the way. Well, so there's all kind of reports out right now that his fiance said that he's not going to retire. Uh, and who just, knows? And he might not. I'm just, I'm just telling you, let that team start falling apart. Let the shine get off the apple of those of those frosted tips just a little bit, and let's see how quickly he walks away. He pull the trigger because right now he's a Hall of Fame coach. Well, he it, goes out hey, today. He's John Madden. So that's what I was about to say. Let's let's talk about Sean McVay for about two seconds. Uh, he does have a standing offer from ESPN. You know he's he's got an offer to come in and be uh, basically what Tony Romo is, and. I mean, think about the ratings there. Think about what he sees on the field and everything. I mean, he is as current as it gets. Super Bowl winning quarterback. How much could he be worth to a Monday Night Football broadcast? I, he he could well, go to ESPN and make more than being a head coach in the NFL. He'd be worth a ton. But here's here's at some point, that, and he should take it, by the way, because $20 million to not do anything. Okay? Yeah. Here, here's Here's... At some point in time, if you're ESPN, you just look sad. You're just walking around the dance floor, and every half decent girl, you're you're just you're just begging them to come to you, and they're all turning you down. So if Sean McVay takes this, he's just a guy that took it when Peyton Manning said no. When when all these other people that they threw a bunch of money at to try to get them to come in there have all said no. Can't Drew Brees, etc. Land the girl. Yeah, they might be. They might be kind of happy that they didn't land Brees because I I hadn't exactly been the biggest fan of of Brees so far. We yeah, it's all early, assume all but, these guys. We all assume all these guys are going to be great. Okay, I, I don't know that they all are. Exactly. Tony is great. No, Tony's fantastic. Tony's absolutely fantastic. Uh, before we get off the Rams, let, let's talk about Aaron Donald, right quick. Now, there was all this talk afterwards. Is he going to retire? Is he not? You know, he's 30 years old. He's only played for, what, eight years or whatever it is. Uh, Donald did say during the Rams' victory celebration that he plans to, quote, run it back. Uh, And afterward, he said he wants to remain with the Rams as long as they bring back the whole core group of players who won Super Bowl 56. He said, if we bring everybody back, I'm back. And then he he told TMZ.com. As long as... 
as long as you bring back the super team, I'll play on the super team. But if you're not going to give me a super team, I'm not playing on the super team. Well, this is the, the two guys that he specifically named. He said, Odell Beckham, Von Miller, we bring them guys back. Let's make it happen. Well, that's because everybody else is already locked up for longer than that. There's nobody else to bring back. Those exactly. are the two free agents. Those are two of the mercenaries. <laughs> now, of course, Beckham, like torn ACL, uh, might keep him out for a little while for the 2022 season. He's going. He's going to miss a lot of next year. But oh, you you want him back for the for the playoffs? So yeah. Um, and then of course Von Miller. Like, can you make it happen? Uh, they. I think they can make enough salary cap space to re-sign him. Uh, especially if you can get Beckham for you know relatively cheap, coming off of a torn ACL, right? That's that's your biggest thing. Um, you know, I think the roster for next year should be kind of similar to this one that won the Super Bowl. Uh, but you know, let's let's look back at the Super Bowl run. This was not some dominant franchise that just ran through the Super Bowl and uh, and got a, a title. Like they had to have a lot of things go in their favor. A lot of balls bouncing their way just to get to the game. And then once they got in the game, they still had to have a little, whole lot of things go right. So, you know, I'm, I'm curious to see what ends up happening here because I don't think that this team will be a whole lot different from this past one. But I also don't know that this team would be favored necessarily to win another one. You kind of feel the same way there? No. No, there's no chance they'd be favored to win. And, and, and I don't know that they'd even be favored... The only thing that benefits them is they're in the NFC, and right now there's no Tom Brady, there's 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 no Aaron Rodgers. Well, we don't really know where Aaron Rodgers is, and we're not really sure what what Kyler Murray is going to do. Like we, what are the good quarterbacks you got to go through to win the NFC? Like Dak, is that the best quarterback that you got to go through right now in the NFC? Yeah. All the great players, all the great quarterbacks are in the NFC right now. That's true. It's not close. And, and with that being said, now Aaron Rodgers could move to the NFC. Kyler could stay in the NFC. Um, you know, I, I, there are still betting odds that you can get out there that, that the 49ers are like the fourth best or third best player uh, favorite to win the Super Bowl next year. You can't have those odds unless you really believe the rumors that Tom Brady's going to come out of retirement and play there. Which like, is, which can is you crazy. give me another reason <laughs> why they would be the third favorite to win the Super Bowl? Well, Jimmy Garoppolo is a free agent. Like, they don't even have him locked up yet. They don't even have Jimmy. So that's assuming Trey Lance is the quarterback. No, they have to have inside information that nobody else has, and they are not letting you bet them. You know, they're not giving you 5,000, uh, you know, plus 5,000 odds or, or plus, you know, 15,000 odds, something like that. They're not giving you 10 to 1, 15 to 1 odds on the 49ers and, and then letting Tom or Rodgers end up there. They're not going to allow that. They're making those odds super low. They're making them super cheap. And they're saying, if you if you want to get it, get it. But this is the best price you're getting because the news hasn't leaked yet. But they know something nobody else Like does. We we think the, the sports books believe that one of those quarterbacks is probably going to end up with the 49ers. I, I don't think there's any way on earth they can have those odds there. And one of those, if they don't have inside information that there's a strong possibility that one of those guys are going to go there. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.